welcome back to my channel. This is Tita Lavinia of Titus of Pageantry and for this episode, I will be giving you a recap of Day 3 of Miss Universe 2021. So please make sure you stick around, please subscribe to the channel as well as hit that bell notification button for your weekly pageant fix. Hi, so welcome back. Welcome to day three. Now, for some, it may be day four. For some, it may be day two. But for this channel, it is day three of Miss Universe 2021. So, um, there were a lot of things that happened yesterday. I'm going to give you a recap of that. But before I proceed, I just want to warn some of you that I will be opening a can of worms in this episode. So, if you feel like, you know, you don't need this negativity in your life or in your pageant journey or, you know, this fiesta atmosphere, please stay away because um, part of the things that I do is really rally for support for our girls but at the same time I will also not shy away from pointing out things that might be remedied that are just there and um, maybe no one is really you know working on improving things but yes I will be opening up something but um, yeah just please keep an open mind for those of you who want to stay on so let me talk about day three um, because I feel like the girls were grouped into batches. Um, they went to, you know, some of the notable places in Jerusalem. So some of the ladies very early on had appearances with the Muba Cosmetics team. And you could really see who the favorites were very early on because they may not be posted on the Muba Cosmetics um, official Instagram uh, page, but you could really see some of the makeup artists in their personal pages post the same girl. So, you know, I guess very early on, you could really gauge who's rising. I know, I know it's not um, like an indicator of who's going to win Miss Universe, but isn't this something that we wait for every year? Like, who's going to get more appearances? I mean, the last time around, um, I remember they worked Rabia like crazy appearing in what seven or eight um events you know pulling her hair putting makeup on but it's a lot more chill this time because we don't even have anything for um Bea Luigi but don't worry because I checked I'm filming this in the afternoon um for day four she will have more appearances um at least for the Muba Cosmetics team oh hello Ponyo if you're noticing I don't have my lights because this lady over here decided to to the wires so there you go so um there uh very early on um we got a glimpse of some of the ladies who were glammed up um i think the ones that we got to see were you know the same girls over and over like miss paraguay hello um but the afternoon or very early in the morning some of the ladies went to the market um including our very own bea luigi there were footage um the video footages of her um going to the market and then you know mingling with the other girls and then there were some who went to the museum the others went to the old jewish quarter if i'm not mistaken and then um there was also a group who did a uh, church tour so you could see some of the ladies visit the Holy Sepulchre. So yeah, um, I mean, it seemed like a really nice way to introduce Israel, to introduce Jerusalem to the ladies. And I think they had, you know, a really great time exploring the city. So there weren't a lot of um, materials to work with. Um, you just really have to follow the individual social media accounts of the girls to really get to see what's happening. But it seems like they had a pretty busy day. Now, in the evening, the girls changed because um, they were invited for a fashion show. So a number of them, you know, took to the lobby and um, they were photographed and videoed nicely by the team from Thailand, Thai Sashes. Again, thank you so much. And, you know, we we got a glimpse of our very own Bea Luigi Gomez, but don't worry, we'll talk about her later on. Uh, it's a little sad because, of course, they have to be very careful, so they always have their masks on, so you couldn't really see the full beauty. So you really have to have expressive eyes um, to really stand out amongst this sea of beautiful women. So let me now give you a few of my standouts for day three. Now, I say this because I feel like they have more of... Um, uh, exposure on social media and then you also get to see them uh, post more on social media so you know they're very out there so first one on my list is of course Miss Paraguay Nadia Ferreira she's everywhere she has had several appearances with um, the Muba Cosmetics team you could see that you know they're really utilizing that beautiful face and you know, this is a beauty that we say walang budol because Catriona Universe one of my friends from Instagram um, 
did like an edit on her face and you know made it more HD and she pretty much looks the same she still looks really striking with her you know light blue eyes so I know a lot of people are getting a little tired because you know if it's someone who's like too beautiful everyday beautiful um, I think most people would say nakakaumay but she is what she is. I mean, those jeans are working overtime for her. Next on my list of standouts from uh, day three, I'm going to give this one to Miss Brazil because she is luminous. Maybe she was a little tired when she arrived, but, you know, seeing her in that pink suit, I think she has this inner glow. I also always say that it seems like she has that invisible ring light thing going on. She's really striking for me. Clear skin. Um, you know, really bright. I mean, yes, I get that she's blonde and white and everything, but, you know, there's brightness in her. There's effervescence, and I don't know what this cat is doing, but I hope she's providing entertainment for you. Next, of course, is um, number three on my list is Miss India. We didn't really get to see a lot of her face shots from day three, but the footages that I saw of her um, were the ones from the fashion show or the party um, in the evening. I thought she looked really pretty. I thought that she, you know, looked like a princess, so to say. Next, I also want to give uh, my fourth slot to Miss Spain because I feel like she is someone you really have to watch out for. The MUBA team seems, you know, smitten with Miss Spain as well. We got to see a number of her photos. She had several outfit changes. So, you know, this one really caters to the pageant fans who want a bit of glam. I mean, even if it's just a quick change for the day. Um, next, uh, I think the MUBA team is also quite smitten with Miss Belgium. Um, I think she's very consistent. She has been serving us looks. Um, you know, it's a little different. One day she's glam, the next day she's more on the edgy side, but the bone structure is there. The foundation, that, that beautiful foundation is there. So yes, I will be keeping an eye on Miss Belgium. And of course, Miss Colombia Valeria Ayos. Now, you know, she's really polished, she's really put together, but I like that she uh, registers really warm on camera. I mean, you know, warm and inviting. And when the camera pans to her and she starts doing his, you know, her pageant thing, I mean, that's when it hits you. Hey, this is Miss Colombia. I mean, hey, this is um, a Colombian beauty with the standards of Ariana Gutierrez. Ariana Gutierrez. So, yeah, um, Miss Colombia is still on my list. Um, those that I want to see more of, I'm quite intrigued with Miss Czech Republic. Muba also worked on her. And I am also quite intrigued with Miss Morocco. I posted her on the Instagram account. She's really very pretty. That short hair look is, um, you know, working for her. And I love her beautiful features. Um, North African women with, you know, that French elegance class going on it's always um, a good thing for me those who I would like to step up though um, because I had you know expectations for these ladies I would still like um, to see more of Miss Puerto Rico polish her styling maybe um, get her styling to be more current um, that's also the same I feel for Miss Venezuela she's always you know well put together she's always presentable but I feel that it's more pageant patty than you know modern woman um also with miss thailand um miss thailand for me of course you know their wardrobe is always um well taken care of it's just, it's just that for this year i feel like she's more of a catalog and she's not really um like resonating as much um yeah she would have her ootds um uh taken but i don't know I imagined a larger personality for Miss Thailand. And of course, with, with Miss Philippines, I'm also going to add her to my step-up list. Um, I know that she lost her luggage. She was able to retrieve her luggage. And, you know, we're waiting for... I'm not saying pasabog looks, guys. I'm just waiting for, you know, looks that aren't so basic. So let's see. Um, maybe the looks that were served to us for day three were just because... I don't know, they were trying to maybe balance things out after the luggage got lost and um, was retrieved. So in the following days, I'm really hoping for more. So why am I sounding this way? Because going now into Miss Philippines, um, 
there were a number of things that happened to her. So we saw her very early in the morning. They had a market trip. And very early in the morning, she was in an animal printed maxi dress and she paired it with a leather jacket. I don't know if it's real leather or faux leather. I'm just saying that it had a very, you know, relaxed rocker girl, you know, edgy look to it. And she paired it with sneakers. And I was fine with that. I thought it was really you know, nice looking. I mean, I would wear that. There are versions of such a maxi dress and, you know, pair it with jack with a, you know, a really nice cut jacket and it really works. So this is something that caters to me, at least the style direction of what she wore um, in the morning. And later in the evening, um, the ladies changed to go to a fashion show and a party. And this was the first time that we really got to see Bea really glammed up. And in a way, it was a little anticlimactic. I like the look, by the way. It's um, it's a long sleeve mini dress in um, a snake print, a uh, sparkly snake print, and she paired it with um, furry jacket and knee high boots. And I thought that was really edgy. My only issue with that look is that it's really very similar to the looks of Cumbia, you know, the Binibining Pilipinas um brand that we've been laughing at and you know we miss from time to time but it was just so basic you could probably pull this dress from forever 21 maybe zara maybe h&m so there's really nothing wrong with it honestly it's just that my issue with the styling direction with Bea for day three was that both looks were good you know standalone would really work well. It's just that I don't understand the styling direction of putting Bea in the same sort of print on the same day. Now, I know that this doesn't matter, but I have read some comments from Latin pageant fans who are, I don't know, maybe concerned, maybe raising their eyebrows a little bit, you know, wondering why Bea wears the same thing the whole freaking day. So, it's not like you could explain, girl, she wore two different dresses, but I mean, you get what I mean. It's pretty much same, same. So I just hope that um, the decision of putting Bea in, you know, two similar prints in one same day is an effect of that lost luggage. Moving forward, I'm really hoping that they go back to that edgier look. I posted this on the Titas of Pageantry page because I really couldn't wait anymore to really push them to go back to what looks good on Bea Luigi Gomez. She is more on the androgynous side. She is more on the edgy side. So go ahead, give her military green, give her a corset, give her this type of, you know, look going on, give her that, you know, futuristic soldier happening and, you know, give her those really dark, um, those really um, graphic looks. But let's see. Let's see, you guys. Now, another um, <clears throat> concern for us is um, Bea was invited by I Travel Jerusalem. This is the uh, social, the official social media account of the city of Jerusalem for a casual interview. So I posted the full nine minute or so footage um, just before this episode. So you can check it out on the Tita's, uh, Tita Lavinia channel. I posted this and um, I think this interview got a lot of mixed reactions. And I'm not going to say a long, I don't know, um, commentary on that interview because I guess by now we have established that Bea is reserved. She's more on the timid side. She's very relaxed. She's very chill. Um, she's also, um, she also sometimes comes across as cold. Um, she doesn't really mingle a lot. She doesn't really post a lot. Um, she you know, makes an effort to keep us in the loop through her um, Instagram stories, but, you know, these are lost after 24 hours. So I think the culmination of these things um, also prompted people to worry a little bit because her energy seemed down and, you know, it seemed that from the interview, even if she gave sensible answers, even if her communication skills, her English, her syntax, and the way she constructs her sentences, even if we don't have any issues with that at all as compared to maybe the previous representatives that we sent to Miss Universe, um, we are missing a bit of that engagement factor. We are really missing a little bit of that... Um, uh, you know, holding someone's attention factor. 
does that make sense? So, um, I wish that she would pick up the pace and that she would find more joy in um, mingling with people and also talking with people because right now, I think uh, the energy of a lot of pageant fans has gotten a little low. But guys, this isn't my fault, you know. <laughs> Because I know that a lot of you are like saying, Tita, because you're so negative about these things. I support her. But my support isn't blind support, you guys. If there are things that can still be tweaked, I mean, how difficult is it to appear engaged and appear happy to be there and appear, you know, in the moment. So, just keep us in the loop. I mean, pageant fans are there anyway. You know, feed them a little bit of a photo here and there and they're happy. So, might as well just give it to the pageant fans. And um, I, I hope that Bea would, you know, really realize that this is how she comes across. And um, and I hope that people around her wouldn't be in denial um, by saying that everybody is just negative. No, we want her to succeed. And um, we want to see more of her. I mean, this is fiesta for us. So, there. I've said my piece. So, I will see you again, guys, for day four of Miss Universe 2021. Goodbye.